recurring nightmares from the past, and then they're just rehashing them into a, a new nightmare. So that See, out of my, yeah, when I was in my teens, it was a time of um, revolution, yeah. cultural and social revolution. From, from what? And hope. From conservatism? Yeah, from yes. war. Conservatism. Even, what about war? Was war a large part of it? Conflict. What about that human yeah. conflict? I know that during my time now, you know, like, when I was, my time was probably the well, 70s. Well, it was a revolt. It was a revolt from the values. Um, I mean, the 50s saw, I suppose, the major confrontation in the 50s was uh, Korea. Mm. Uh, the 60s saw Vietnam. The 70s continued to see Vietnam. <laughs> okay. uh, Why Vietnam? In about 75. Why was Vietnam? But it was the same thing. It was that, um, Isn't that funny how we had Vietnam... And um, we had a conservative crowd, and we also had that revolt against that. But in the same token, a lot of Vietnam was about drugs. It was about control. It was about a centre. Yeah. Because a lot of that in, that was a centre of drugs, basically. Yeah. It was yeah. control. Laos and all that sort of thing. Yeah. yeah. Laos and Thailand and Apocalypse Now. Yeah. But that's a band we haven't talked about yet. No, we haven't. We've only talked about vanilla fudge, I think, so far in the band. That's right, and hot chocolate. And hot chocolate. I never liked right. hot chocolate. You didn't like hot chocolate? No. Why? Is that too much of the age? Oh, that's age. That's getting that's too far. Yeah. Okay, so let's go back. Long back. Long back. Now. Back. Could we go back a bit? But the doors, of course. The doors. Yeah, they, they what was his trick? I mean, uh, the total right. rejection of values, like, you know, mother, you know, I want to, you know, I want to kill you. No, that was his father. He wanted to do other things with yeah. his mother. Oh, did he? Yeah. <laughs> no, I can sympathise with that. I mm. suppose. No, I can't. Well, I think that, yeah. well, he had an ass about for me. But anyway. Hello? We were talking about Vietnam, I think. Yeah, we were talking about Vietnam. Yeah, the, the 50s had uh, Korea and the 60s mm. had Vietnam. Well, I had a lot of troubles. I mean, I, was, I didn't grow up in that era at all. Like I, well, I did. I was born in 1969. But when I was in high school, it was the first time I really comprehended or had any comprehension as to what was going on at all at that particular time. That was next door, seeing the um, perfectly placid gardener who was next door, you know, go off the deep end mm-hmm. um, and uh, and lose it basically. And you know, he went through a lot of, a lot of stress and trauma. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that the art of that period is. You know, parallels that just reflects exactly what was going on. So abstract expressionism and postmodernism, all of that era, including what's happening in Australia, reflects all those ideals, all those bits and pieces and trauma that people had to go through to get through to now. Yeah. So what are we reflecting? Are you reflecting personal trauma or are we reflecting what's happening in popular culture? Well, well I'm still carrying on the carrying on the fight from the sixties, of course. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, still, still. So what? what, what revolting. Still revolting against still the revolution. Still revolution leads. Right. Is that in any form of anarchy? What happened to the punks? That's a personal. Did the punks come out of anarchy? The, the punks made a made a sincere effort. Okay. So the punks made a sincere effort to come to rehash what? Was it the skinheads well, of the Nazis, or was it? I think the punks couldn't be hippies, and they still they wanted to reject, so they went out completely the other. Actually, it's a fantastic song by, um, they're called The Steppers. Mm-hmm. It's an absolutely atrocious modern 90s song that's called I Want to Be a Hit. Mm-hmm. And it's played at like 120 beats a minute. And yeah. 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 It's completely the opposite of what a hippie would be. Yeah. There are a lot of people now that want to be hippies, and it's quite interesting to see how people dress when they try to imitate hippies, and how they talk yeah, when they try to imitate them. hippies. Mm-hmm. Um, and they show that they don't really know what hippies were like at all. So what generation are they? That's the, that goes to me, that goes with the, the X generation that's kind of imitating. That's what all the, the covers have, have to do with them. You know, people don't in, initiate new music, create new music. They just revisit the old and jazz it up and digitalise it or whatever they're going to do to it. Mm-hmm. Um, and rehash it for a generation that that hasn't experienced the original. Mm. Uh, what were they done in the times when, in the 60s? When my mother used to, she showed me all of her Beatles collection. And, yeah. and I suppose they would have been doing things, things like disco or bubblegum music. Remember the <laughs> 1910 fruit gum yeah. company? Yeah. Fruit gum company. Fruit gum. Yeah. Yummy, 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 I've got love in my tummy. Stuff like that. Yeah, but, even, but now, when I listen to that stuff now, I find that refreshing. And, uh, mm. and that it has 
least something original in it mm. compared to the uh, things she was in the of today. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, Frank Zappa saw that too. It's another band from the 60s yeah, and 70s. Yeah, like um, Billy in the Mountain. Yeah, yeah. and, and uh, quite disgusting you know, records here. The lyrics that he came out with. So that was a, reje- a rejection of that and conservative that mode. Princess, for example. Are we moving back into that conservative mode again by revisiting? Are we reflecting? I think we are because I think I think money talks more than anything now, and and, and money likes to be safe. Money did did, be money, sure did money money happen then? I'm just, yeah. Like that, you've that got to pay your three yeah, pounds, exactly or you can't that, get in. That Isle of Wight concert epitomises that. But that was an imitation as well. That was an imitation of Woodstock. And uh, Woodstock didn't have the, as far as I know anyway, Woodstock didn't have the sort of hassles that the Isle of Wight concert had. Except for the Hells Angels killing that guy they were trying to get out on the stage. That was the only thing. That was, that was just <laughs> that's, a, that's just one event. Yeah. That was just one event. Apart from that, it was totally peaceful. Yeah. I, didn't know that I didn't know that at Hells Angels. Yeah, the Hells Angels killed, killed someone. You sure that was Woodstock? That was Woodstock. Or not Monterey or another one? No, it was Woodstock. Oh, what a shame. Yeah. That's another it was the same thing with the Isle of Wight. I mean, you have this classic um, Joni Mitchell yeah, on the stage thing, you know, getting all heart wrenched about some guy coming up on the stage and saying, "This is all a farce. This yeah. isn't really happening. Look around you; it's yeah, not yeah, really yeah. happening." Yeah. Why you've got this? You've got this crowd of big thugs, security guards, beating the crap out of this guy outside the, yeah. the gates. And here's Joni Mitchell trying to sing this song about a yellow submarine or a yellow taxi, you yeah. know, up on the stage. And um, it's just two, two, you know, conflicting juxtaposed juxtaposed situation. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I see the, the way I see it, money is what messes everything up. Right. Yeah. So we're moving money into something that it's all straight away. Well, what about Leonard Cohen? Yeah, I used to listen to his music a lot. Um, that was towards the end of the sixties. His, I think a lot of his stuff was sort of paralleled some of the doors and some of it paralleled some of the things that Led Zeppelin were on about. And a lot of it was about the rejection of um, the ideals that we were given in the 30s and 40s and you know, the jazz hay, you know, the jazz times. Yeah. And then suddenly we're off into um, how much daytura can you drink in one day? Yeah, he was very self abusing. Did we all and become self abusing? Some of us did, I must say, some of us did. Yes, yes we have all been very self abusive at times. Yeah, because it was the drug culture as well. I mean, there'd been drugs have been around for well, hundreds of years. But, uh, but it wasn't to that extent of abuse. No, so. and it didn't become a, a sort of. A well, maybe it was a way it symbolised a generation. Because mm. it did. And there was an innocence that learned drug use and. In the 60s and so maybe 70s. it was a, a culture trying to the establish a drug-based. Well, it was crime. looking. It was looking at an alternative, and drugs, drugs were um, were seen as an alternative, as a valid alternative. Mm-hmm. And they're still up, aren't they? They are, but there's a difference now. They, they cost money. They cost money back then <laughs> as well. Not as so much. But relatively speaking, they did. I think still cost as much. Oh, probably still. I don't, I don't know. I haven't actually priced them. Is that I don't grow apart from the head jumper that you wear? Well, I, I only wear that on a special occasion. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah. For interviews and for you know, situations that fill me in. Yeah, so it's, it's more a keepsake than an ongoing sort of thing. Mm. It's, it's not something I daily involve myself with routine. No. I, I try to leave, well, I try not to say that anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, you wonder what happened to that dialogue. It's a bit of a giveaway. Actually, it's quite, well, you know, like, actually is an actually funny word. Because see, man, man is back again. Yeah, it is. Man, man. is back again. Cool is yeah. back again. And uh, dude, dude's dude, back. Well, dude, dude's relatively recent, I reckon. Mm. Saying, what, saying since that someone's a cool dude and all that sort of stuff. Mm. Yeah, that wasn't around in the 60s. Was except except in words like dude ranch. But what what happened to woe man? Like, what happened to woman? Yeah, Everything was man, man. But it yeah. never became woe man. No. Well, it did. John Lennon said it, woman. Right? Oh, okay. Woman. Mm. And, um... Oh, let's have a sitting, like, you know, let's have four strokes of loving, peaceful lying strokes. Lying strokes. sleepings. <laughs> <laughs> that's a wall of lying. I still miss sleepings. Wall of sleepings. Wall of sleepings. Mm. So maybe that's cottoned on. Sit-ins. Well, sit-ons. I do sit-ons. 
Yeah. Well, tractors and... Yeah. So Tax ships. Mostly, mostly I remember. Seeds. I remember being caught up in the hype of being at uni over east and going to a, ru- to a rainforest logging meeting or something. Oh, I end up trying to block off these bloody huge, gigantic thingers going through. Mm. And I think a lot of that originated in when the farmers started taking up Dane Tree and all the rest of it. Yeah. And yeah, that was way before we were. Yeah, yeah. So the farmers were just doing what they were told back then. Yeah. In fact, if they want to... Um, I've forgotten what they call it now, the settler, soldier settlers and all that. Mm. They only got their land on the condition that they cleared X amount in a certain time. They didn't clear it. And they, they, couldn't, it. they couldn't keep it. Yeah, they were taken off again. It was taken off. God. But what happened? So, so they were doing what the agri department was telling them. Now they're mm. trying to do what the agri department tells them, which is plant trees. Mm. So we've had that radical shift in political interests yeah. as far as geography and um, you know, natural habitat and everything else. Yeah. In the whole world, not just in. in but even now, even even now, the greeny thing is um, that's that's lost its um, innocence and, and its. Well, yeah, uh, Greenpeace that's going ram raid a ship, and where's the money coming from? They're multi million dollar. Yeah, money. exactly. And the greeny, the green parties, um, political parties, hmm? have turned into big, you know, big business. Big, you know, the way they stuffed around with the election in Queensland, hmm. the greenies. Yeah. Um, so yeah, what was going on in the 50s? They've got the purpose the of the environment now, and, and it's into politics, power. Mm. And I'm sure they're well motivated, but I think they're, they're starting to lose, lose touch with you know, the original sort of concept. And that's what happened to the hippies. That's what happened to the... They disappeared you know, into the rainforest and, and, sort of and then got ripped out with a chainsaw. Yeah. Well, some of the power games that, goes on, that go on in some of these communes, some of the egos that kick around. Oh. The best... Place that I, you know, when Nimbin was all happening up in near Wollongong and the Oregon coast, Dorigo. yeah. Well, I, I was at a place, uh, Bellingen, or near Bellingen, yeah. And instead of trying to make a commune, what they had was they all owned their own land, their own property mm-hmm. separate, so they didn't, uh, you know, they didn't have to consult each other for what happened on their land. It wasn't a shared title or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But what they used to do was uh, to they were in, interdependent, so. Mm-hmm. They'd um, tr- barter goods for, for equipment or and mm-hmm. whatever for help, um, but they but they were autonomous in their own sort of section. In their own right. Yeah, and that took a lot of the ego yeah. and that out of it, and it was a community that was the whole Belgium together was voluntarily, the whole, sort of thing. Yeah, right? Belgium became the, the whole town basically. Yeah, I think it did. That was after after I lost mm-hmm. contact there. I remember Dorigo was up a lot higher than that, and they yeah. couldn't get that to happen. The only reason being that there wasn't the height. Of people passing through, right, from that area, because it's a, a bit further out. Yeah, it's up, it's up above. On the up on the hills, yeah. Yeah. But I used to you know, go through Nimbin and probably yeah. in all those areas since right. all of that's happened, and it's all shut down. It's all yeah. become conservative. Yeah, well, they get their land now. Oh, yeah, they're, they're all, it's all owned. I mean, they become landowners. They become landowners. Yeah. yeah, and they're rich. Yeah, very rich. A lot of those old hippies are rich, but yeah. do they want it? See, I'm not rich. <laughs> <laughs> Neither am I. I'm poor. Yeah. An artist. Yeah. Yeah. So oh, they're trying to create a happening of some sort. Yeah. Who is it, Tom? Mm, it's ten past four. Ten past four. So ten I've got ten Well, I remember TV going right back to whenever I can remember going right back. Yeah, well, we didn't have a TV until I was 18. We didn't have a TV at all, but even without a TV, we were still influenced by the TV. Yeah. We would sneak every possible moment to go and see, you know, um, somebody else's TV. You know, Sultans of Arabia and Adventure Island and you know, Gilligan's Island and what else was on at that time? Yeah. The Brady Bunch. My God, how conservative can we get? Yeah, Brady Bunch. American conservatism too. Middle America. Mm. Bible Belt, Middle America. Mm. All this, um, all this, um, what do you call it? Yeah. Look at Oprah Winfrey. It's and been it's going more extreme. Yeah. How more conservative can we get? Talk back. Talk about, yeah, talk about talk radio about TV. and TV. We've, yeah. we've already reached that. We have reached the age when they said we weren't going to reach. When you drive down the highway and it, and it says on a big screen on the highway, you are doing 120 kilometres an hour um, and the legal speed limit is 110. Yeah. It's Big Brother. It's here. Do they do that? Do they, they do that. Over yeah. east, you drive and there's a huge screen. It's it tells above you what the your highway. Speed is. It tells you exactly what your speed is. You're on constant radar. So you lose. It's already there. Gee, right. Okay, so we've had so that. So you have to have stealth motor cars now. That'll be the next thing. Yeah, where well you can't ride. Ra- it can't be radar. Can't ride up. Yeah, plus the X15. Yeah. Sort of a Holden X15 Holden. 
Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Good. You could use that. Uh, podcast and motor. Podcast came out in the seventies. It was a huge splurge. It was the Thunderbird. It was the Cadillac. It was the oh, Thunderbirds, and then they were before then. What were the what a bitch? Monaro. Monaro. No, they were the sixties. Sixties. What the a bitch? GDHOs. GDHOs. The big pop forwards. Pop forwards. Yeah. Lots of gas. Yeah, lots of gas. A lot of big V8s. Three five one V8s. Shakers. They call them. Okay, so that was the beginning of the world race. Basically, of you know, every exploiting every possible. Oh, the Americans have been doing that for years. Yeah, well, as soon as, as soon as they landed on there, they started ripping the land all together. Yeah, but then gas guzzling motor, motor vehicles and pollution and all that sort of stuff. Ralph Nader, that's a name from the 60s and 70s, mm-hmm. right through to the present. He was a, a greenie from way back, mm. conservationist from way back. You're talking about going right back. What about the Flintstones? What about the Jetsons? The Jetsons. What about yeah. Rocky and Bullwinkle? Yeah. What Why? about what about Mr. Squiggle? Mr. Squiggle. Thirty years ago. Mm-hmm. And um, and uh, Blackboard and uh, Bill Steam shovel. Don't know anything about it. He's got like talcum powder out of his, out of his nose. <laughs> you sure it wasn't cocaine? No, it was talcum powder. It was talcum powder. Yeah. But you can tell that through the videos. No, I right in and asked him. Oh, you did. <laughs> and they told me it was talcum powder, and I believed it. Right. Okay. You believe yeah. them? That's and a classic was, example yeah. of. Of um, you know, indoctrination by a media yeah, and credulity. Yeah. Mm. So we were basically the TVs t- took over all of our lives. They did. I remember. I remember when we got our TV. Is it good? And it was. Um, do I think it's good? Well, TV. It's good that they took over your lives. Suddenly you didn't no, have dinner. At the, I don't. I don't think it's good. What? I saw a show on TV. Um, well, it's more comfortable ago. for dinner time. You didn't have to go about, into, into about the influence of TV. Really? Yeah. And it's it's really bad. What the fact that you don't have to go into a really cold dining room? You can now go and sit in the lounge room, where it's really sit, warm. And well, back in the old days, you could sit around the back of the TV and warm your hands on the uh, oh, on, on the, the glow plugs on the tubes. Oh, yeah, yeah on the tubes and the valves. Yeah. But um, now they don't have valves. No. So no TV, TV for me has become a very cold experience. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Except for the sound. We used to leave our dinner on the back of the TV to so walk out warm. Yeah. I'm lying right on the floor and watching. Um, sea Hunt with uh, Lloyd Bridges mm. and Mike Mike well, I've forgotten his name but uh, he always had he had the twin air tanks and, oh. and all the bad guys had one but he <laughs> so had, he could go further he had two short stubby ones on his back and these other guys had long single ones oh right yeah, so he yeah. Was yeah. and he had, he had a light coloured wetsuit because it's all black and white he had a, a grey coloured wetsuit but everyone else had black mm. Crikey, so it was like it was a bit like Charles Darwin, you know, it's far from the fittest, especially when you're like you're in a white environment. Yeah, that it's like cowboys and Indians, underwater cowboys and Indians, yeah. really. They even fight arrows, except they were spear guns. Spear guns. Yeah. So we had it re- all recreated on a TV set that reflected that through culture. Our culture became TV. Oh, American culture. Okay. Yeah. Just American? Do you think well, just American? Well, I remember there was an Australian show called Ten Town, and that's where they uh, they built their own town. What about Barjars? Don't don't remember that. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> when was that? <laughs> that was the uh, <laughs> the D generation brought that up. Oh right, right. They had a show. Of this no, detective. I never saw that. Detective. Oh, Barjas! I didn't see that. <laughs> you didn't see it. See, <laughs> that's a take off of homicide. Homicide yeah. in Division Four. Or Division whatever. Four. Yeah. Okay, so that, that was um, the big bust. I remember the music from Sea Hunt. Yeah. Da 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 I can't remember the music. The break is up here, right in. And I always used to watch it lying on the floor like this. Yeah. So I always saw everything sideways. <laughs> if I do it now, it looks really weird. But I used to be able to do that. Like try on the paint. floor and see things straight, even though I was lying on the side. Yeah. yeah. Have you ever tried to paint? But when they're on the water, they're all swimming like that. Maybe that's what it is. That's they really swim cool. horizontal, so I can see his expressions. <laughs> when he was swimming. Yeah, that's good. So you actually had one up on all of us. Yeah. We all watched the TV front on, so we didn't actually yeah, get to see you didn't that. Get, you didn't see their expression, yeah. probably. We could only see the top half of their body. Yeah. We had a Chrysler, a Chrysler TV, and it was a piece of furniture. Did you have that? Was it a T76 car? Yeah, we did. Dad, did. Dad sold the Could you fit a 44 gallon drum in the boot? I bet you could have, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All the labels peeled off the dashboard and just stick on the labels. <laughs> and uh, the thing that disappointed me most was that my, my dad had a Jaguar and he sold a Jaguar to get a Leyland P76. What, well, so you fit all the kids in the boot? That was when the generation gap hit with a vengeance because I just couldn't understand why he did that. <laughs> and it took me a long time to accept that he would do that. 
Oh dear, what a, what a sacrifice we had. Yeah. And it was all due to the TV, because I mean, they put really good ads on about that P76. Yeah. Take your, ch- take your kids to church, you know, you'll fit them all in the boot, you won't worry about any noise at yeah. all. Yeah. All that. Yeah, that'd be a good farmer's car, they could shove their dog in anything. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, get some man up in the boot and out jumps the dog. <laughs> <laughs> a large dog. Yeah. And for a horse, yeah, for a horse now, yeah. part of one. I'm trying to think what other shows there were. Roger Ranger, all right. are old. They're just replaying them now. Yeah, we have to. Rob, I mean, we, have, we can't said before. We can't introduce them. Mr. Mr. Yeah. That was another one. Yeah. But the Jetsons was a good one. Met George Jetson, Jane and his wife. I mean, it was the American family. Their their dog Astro, mm-hmm. um, and all the sort of space cars putting around and mm-hmm. modern space music, modern music. What did Gilligan's Island have to do with? I mean, where did that? Yeah, film? the castaways. You were Gilligan's yeah, Island. The people that were rejected. Their little their sex symbol there. They had that yeah. movie. Movie starlet, yeah, see through huts, and yeah, 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 yeah. palm leaves, and, and that, was, that was good old Yankee know how, American know how, yeah, sets that echoed, yeah. and the uh, the rich, yeah, he was Jim, um, Jim Backus, he did uh, Mr. McGurk, he was Mr. McGurk, you know, I used to like him actually. Don't be Gillis, don't be Gillis, and Maynard G. Krebs, <laughs> I mean, what you know, don't, don't be Gillis. Gillis, no, it's like that, the thinker. <laughs> The Many Loves of Doby Gillis. That was a great show. That was an American crew cuts and all this sort of stuff. Yeah, here we have a character that doesn't know much about TV at all. Wasn't influenced. Yeah, so you missed out on all this yeah. influence. Well, actually, yeah, I wonder what happened. I wonder what we did miss out on. Because we didn't really miss out on it. We still, in some ways, as children, had that. Still got through to you. Still got through to you. Even didn't actually have a set. Well, you've got a school. If you can't talk about you, you didn't know what was happening on Batman, you know, the day yeah. before. I mean... Even though every sh- every had two episodes for every one, and you knew he was going to save the other person at the other end. Yeah. But um, if you didn't know what it was, and if he was or he wasn't, then yeah, you were you were out, yeah. discarded at school. Yeah. Well, it's, it's like that now. It was a bit like, it's like that. that now. And yeah, home and away. Documentary Yeah. Well, ER. ER. Uh, and uh, then uh, we've got and then we've got a new one coming. Did you watch? Uh, no, but we're all we're revisiting now. Uh, Melrose Place is, you know, the tart side of it, and then yeah. Melrose Place is, uh, uh, ER is the other end of Melrose Place. It's on yeah. the other side yeah. of the block. So why do we have to have sex, drugs, and rock and roll and money? I mean, there yeah. it is all again. We're revisiting. Nine two zero four one six two zero. Yeah, that zip code. Zip code. <laughs> that one. But there was a guy on drugs in there. Everyone. The whole lot yeah, of them. Yeah, it's quite pathetic actually. It's enough to make you sell up and live in the country and live in a shack of a house. And yeah, or move to Los Angeles. And not go to university anymore, and you absolutely have to. What, for the next eight years? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and think about all this. Yeah, well, Manager Krebs. And avoid life. Manager Krebs was a beatnik. Now, that's a word you don't hear anymore. Beat- Beatniks, no. My beatnik mother was a beatnik. A little zip, little, little zip here. Mm. Or a little moustache, a little thing out. Yeah, where the women yeah. used to knock their front teeth out. And jazz, concerts. and they were into jazz and bongo drums. <laughs> and everything was cool. Yeah, hey man, that's where all that started. The that's beat, where the, the hey man beat, started. The beat, well, it really started with the African Americans. Yeah, African Americans, yeah. Right? And jazz and all that. And hey man, and bro, and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. Brother. Brother. I got, I got, called, I got called brother, I got introduced to a group of people by Hell's Angel once to call me brother. Really? Like you my brother Tom. Yeah. Oh, was, that was an honour. That was a real honour for me. And this, this Hell's Angel's name was Tab, I called him. And Short for uh, Tablet. No, well, it might have been. It might have been. But he, he became an alternative uh, lifestyle type. And oh, right. And, uh, he, he got stopped, out of stopped, that he stopped stereotype. With them, yeah. He sold me his bike. He sold me his bike in pieces. Oh, um, right. For yeah. $80. Which really? was, he just needed some what, money to get away. No, it was a BSA. A like BSA with um, Heavilite pistons, uh, brought out to 750 high compression pistons, straight through exhaust, uh, <laughs> clip on <laughs> bars, rear set pegs. Uh, no mufflers on it, just little megaphones on the end of the pipes. What's just to make that one much A Harley more. tank, a peanut Harley tank. These days it's all in stereo, when you can, you've got speakers on it to make it even better. Oh, uh, yeah, now no, it's just a... I've got a photo of this bike at home, actually. I've got a beard and boots and overalls. You have to bring it in. I'm riding on this bike. Why don't you bring that in and blow it up? If I can find it, yeah, you could try that. Yeah, yeah bring it in and yeah. blow it up. Yeah. Yeah, it was quite an amazing bike. Why don't? Why don't? Didn't I leave? sold it. I ended up selling it to get away from Sydney. That's another story. <laughs> and, um, but, but I sold it. Um, I shouldn't have sold it. I feel guilty about selling it. But the guy I sold it to couldn't start it. All right. He couldn't kickstart. Couldn't kickstart. That's what he put an electronic ignition no, on the his camera. He, he, he rolled it down a hill to start it. All right. Yeah, and I let him go with that. 
<laughs> so to push him and let him go, and that's it. He bought it before he saw it. He agreed to buy it before he saw it. Oh, God. So the BSAs were around. What other bikes were before that? Uh, we still had the Harleys. They've been, they've gone right through. Yeah, Harleys have been right through. And then we had all the, the jet, jet, jet bikes. Triumph coming. Yeah. Triumph. But the old BSA, the BSA Rocket 3 and Triumph Trident, they were similar sort of bikes. Um, so that's Saint. That's the technology side we've had. We've had America with all its yeah, height. See, we've got away from motorbikes that are, that are basic motorbikes. Even to the height. To the height. To all this jazz yeah. stuff. 240 yeah. k's. We've got away from how cars. things really are yeah. to, to the appearance of things. So why we and that's what the so X generation is so dissatisfied with. And that's what Andy Warhol was on about. Mm. The, I think that's one of the things anyway. Mm. That was the appearance of things. The appearance of things. So when you see 150 odd co pilots in one painting, they're all the same. Mm. He's going on the appearance, the appearance, the appearance. Looks, 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 mm-hmm. looks, looks. But he, he also visited Chairman Mayo and Marilyn Monroe and Johnny yeah, Kennedy. Yeah, and reproduced it, reproduced, reproduced it, reproduced it. Reproduced it. I'm just saying, this is you. I'm yeah. getting my money from you. No, I'm just reproducing you over and over yeah. and over and over. Yeah. You're nothing. You're a non-identity. Yeah. Yeah. You don't make an yeah, identity. You're, as, you're as many different colours as I want to make it. Mm. Yeah. Even with the dot to dot paint. Yeah, yeah. Actually, Lichtenstein started that lot. Yeah, he used the dots. And yeah. Brad and Jenna and all that sort of stuff. Yeah. And all that melodrama, and the melodrama that people live their lives by now. And that mm. was something I was very conscious of. Mm. That it was really important that you be like the people in the, in, on, in the TV. In the show. TV? I mean, so I have a stuff like exactly like how. Dennis and Menace. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to watch Dennis and Menace. Because you were because a challenge. Dennis, because Dennis was a menace. That's right, you, you were like a menace. menace. They didn't want me to be a menace, so I wasn't allowed to watch Dennis and Menace. Yeah. I wasn't allowed to watch the Flintstones. Yeah, because nothing I thought, no, no idea I expressed was mine. It was always, where'd you get that idea? Who told you that? The TV. Yeah, the TV. I used to lie, I used to say the TV, because if they knew <laughs> that it was my idea, that'd be it. That'd be it. That'd, be it. I'd, that'd blow their minds, except I didn't know what that meant. Because they were brought up the TV, or because they'd been. Um, I don't know if people were blowing their minds back there, except they were.